If you are a host, you want to be thinking like a guest. And if you are a guest, you want to be thinking like a host. If you're a guest, that means you don't show up early. Because if you're a host, you usually need those like last 10 minutes or so to just put all the final touches together. Well, because you're usually not ready. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like I'm usually still in curlers. Right. And if someone <laughs> arrives and it's 10 minutes prior and you're not ready, you're not going to tell them like, I'm sorry, I'm not ready. You just need to like So should you come here. late? Like should you give – oh, that's a good question. Should you give like a 15-minute buffer? Yes. I consider being there within the first 15 minutes being on time. I'm going to apologize in advance because they're literally cutting the grass directly outside of the window <laughs> that I'm sitting in front of. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> um, that was poor etiquette, but here's the thing. So Allison, everything on this podcast, you should know, connects back to Philadelphia in some way, shape or form. Love it. And what is your connection to Philadelphia? So I went to Villanova, which is how we first know each other yes. um, because we went to college together and studied journalism. Yes. Oh my God. He's like- up. So here's the thing. The world gets smaller and smaller the older you get. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. you're where in New England are you from? I grew up in Massachusetts, but then okay. I also have a lot of family in Maine, and it's okay. a small place, so kind of know people all over. Well, then, like, I went to work up in Massachusetts in Boston for a while, so mm-hmm. it's just, like, it's just an ever-flowing yeah. well, flow. I mean, it makes sense because as you get older, the more experiences you have and the more things you're able to connect it back to. Mm-hmm. The whole etiquette thing, I have to be honest that I have a an illustrious um, past in etiquette. I was trained by the best. I was preparing to meet Prince Harry when he came to um, New Jersey to see Chris Christie after Hurricane Sandy. Wait, I legitimately? Like, so I, Mike Jarek, Fox 29... Yeah, <clears throat> we had this like competition like oh I it think was... I remember seeing this like there was like a cutout of Prince Harry with you yes it was called yeah. when Harry meets Casey so like yeah. a play on like the movie so Fox in in New York the local Fox they had like a their I think like weather girl was single and I was the traffic girl and I was single so Mike's like we're gonna like they were just imagining that Prince Harry was like coming to marry one of us so like we did this <laughs> whole like battle with them that like he was gonna choose one of us um, and so I did like this etiquette ca- class. I actually met Lord Wedgwood before he passed away. Incredible. Like Wedgwood, China. Like, oh. you know, Wedgwood. Yeah, like yeah, Wedgwood. Yeah. yeah. So we did that. And I went to like Boyd's in Philadelphia and they like put me in probably like a St. John knit that cost like more than my rent. <laughs> 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 if oh, no one knows what a St. John knit is. Uh, it's probably like what every mom wears to graduation at Villanova, but it might be too hot. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like not forgiving also. Like there's no, okay, here, Allison, there is no tummy tuck with a St. John knit. Like you're on your own. This is true. (laughs) (laughs) There is no slurping. All right. What is the number one most common offense in the world of etiquette? Oh my gosh. The most common <laughs> offense or the thing that I would say the thing that the most, most common offense and then what really grinds your gears. <laughs> okay. Most common Wait, offense real, is. Sorry, really quick. Do you mind just moving your camera down slightly? Yes. There you go. Perfect. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I would say most common offense is over promising, under delivering, or having difficulties with RSVPs and boundaries. Um, and it comes from a really good place, but it is so common for people to get an invitation and think like, there's no way in the world that I can make this work, but I don't really want to say no. So I'm going to wait till the last minute to say something came up and I just can't make it work, but I really want to be there when the more kind thing to do would be to just say, thank you so much for the kind invitation. We regrettably can't make it. And you also don't need to go on and on and explain. Here's a question. How can we be better hostesses? where we aren't getting our tail feathers ruffled if someone does the plate thing and let us lets us know? Okay, great question. So number one, it's none of your business why people can't attend. <laughs> so you need to just graciously accept that decline. And I recognize that some invitations can feel a little more sensitive and challenging if people can't make it. Um, but generally speaking, you want to respect someone's reasoning for not being there. And I also am a firm believer that the people who are meant to be there will be there and there will always be other events. And then I also think you need to give yourself some healthy buffer room 
when you are setting an RSVP deadline because in er invariably 100% of the people are not going to respond on time 100% of the time. So you want to bake in some time for yourself. It, I always up. hear like six weeks, eight weeks, like what, what is your amount of time? And is there a love tap in the middle of that timeline to be like, hey, hey I, I US, you USPS is just not what it used to be. Just making yes. sure you received it. <laughs> yes. So I think that it's all about intention and really everything in etiquette is about <laughs> intention. I often get asked, like, I haven't received a thank you note, but I really want to ensure that oh, my wedge with China we that are I the, send yes. yes, we are the worst generation for that. I am such a, like, send a text thank you. And I know that's terrible. I was not raised that way. My mom had, like, Gianna, you probably did. Like, we had stationary from yeah. the time mm -hmm. we were born. Like, from yeah. our first breath, I had Catherine Ann McDonald stationary. Mm -hmm. So it's like... I wasn't raised like that, but what's but I, wrong with us? I don't think the text is bad as long as, like, if there's a follow-up note as well. I like to send the text yes. acknowledging that I got it, and then there will be a formal thank you note after. Because sometimes it, it like, I did the same thing. I'm like, okay, it's literally been three weeks since I got the email notification that the gift was delivered. Did they get it or did they not? I understand they just got married or they're a new mom or whatever, yes. and there's a lot going on, mm -hmm. and they may not be writing the thank you notes. It's not about me being like, I didn't get your thank you note. It's me right. saying, hey, I just want to make sure that this didn't get stolen off of your friend's stoop. Okay, yes. boomer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think that's fine. I do think that's fine, especially if you think someone lives in an area where it might get swiped. Um, everywhere like, is that now. What's, uh, we yeah. can't, we're not even getting into that because everywhere is that now. But um, yeah, I am so, I'm so terrible at that. I'm, I'm absolutely horrible at that. Okay, well, let's notes. talk about that. Is there an appropriate timeline in which thank you notes should be going out? So, yes. And I always say that a thank you note is better than no thank you note. So, oh. <laughs> really, like, yeah. I don't think it's ever, I think it's okay if you just say, you know, if you're going to start anew and just begin writing thank you notes today, but I wouldn't say it's been several months, so I'm just going to forget about it if you really do want to send those thank you notes. Ideally, you're sending them immediately. And so like you go to a dinner party and it's easier. Like it's top of mind. It's Whoa, really Allison, fresh. Whoa, Alison, you just said you go to a dinner party. Yes. So if you go to someone's house and sending a thank you note, it's, it's a lovely thing to do. Um, oh, and man. So, so I nice. send a, I send a thank you text. I don't know about a thank you note for that. Okay. One of and Eric's okay. friends, they sent my mom a thank you note after my wedding. And I was like, oh my God, I feel so bad. Oh, that's really You kind. do not need to feel bad. And I, think I do always don't... make sure I thank the parents before I leave a wedding. Which right. is great. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And oh, we can talk God. about separately, like, how you want to thank people or say goodbye at a wedding or at various events. Like, when is it appropriate to just sneak out? And when is it appropriate to make sure that you connect with the host? Like, a wedding is oh. an event where, depending on the size of the event, if it's a massive wedding, you may not be able to have one-on-one -on -one time with the bride and or groom. But ideally you're able to connect with them at some point over the day. Um, but you don't need to get their attention. Monopolize their time. Exactly. I think we all can vividly remember anyone listening, you know, like you remember your wedding of like, ah, like there's someone just always right there. And they're like, Hey, <laughs> great wedding. I'm like, thanks. Go find yes. somebody else. Like, Oh my God. You said yes. to me so many times at your wedding, you're like, if one more person comes up to me and has to make small talk, I'm going to die. <laughs> you're like, I can't do it anymore. I'm a, I'm aware the band is really good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Like I, and maybe that's rude because like we had a welcome party, which was yes. two hours nonstop talking. I did not see Eric one time for mm -hmm. two hours. And I was like, mm -hmm. that is when we talk to everybody. So yeah, like let's, okay, go into weddings. Let's do that. What is appropriate for the, the bride? For the bride? Okay. First, I think that it's your big day. So you need to identify what's most important to you. And then you need to communicate that to people who can support you and, and set yourself up for success. So don't be upset if things don't go your way, if you didn't communicate what your vision would be. And I think you need to, speaking of setting yourself up for success, know what is going to make you feel your best. Like, do you need a moment? Do you need to make sure that you have something to eat? Do you like kind of like work in those moments to yourself or with people that like fill you up in order to make the day 
go more smoothly. Make decisions like, are you going to do a receiving line? If you're not going to do a receiving line, then own it. Um, ha if you're working with a wedding planner or if you're working with a day of coordinator, make sure that they're really dialed into your preferences. Also, you can delegate. You can have, uh, like I have a girlfriend who's getting married soon who has delegated all correspondence related to the wedding to her maid of honor for the week of. So you can talk to her up until the week prior and then any other texts. I love that. Smart. I like that too. I'm out of office. Here's, <laughs> yeah. exactly. bother her. <laughs> yes. And I think it's such a personal thing. Um, it's such a personal thing, but you want to think seriously about what an ideal day would look like for you and then set yourself up for executing it. Oh, I love it. What about for guests of a wedding? We did talk about, you know, making sure that you're a communicating appropriately in the timeline about yes. if you can or cannot come. But let's say you go to the event and you're like, yes. oh, listen, our kids are having a meltdown. The sitter can't deal with it anymore. We have to leave. I'm sure there is that feeling of like, I don't want to bother the bride and groom. They're having such a good time. We're just going to sneak out. Is that okay? Yes. Or should you I definitely always... think so. Okay. No, I don't think you need to interrupt some major moment and say, my child's having a meltdown. My mom made me invite those kids anyway, so I don't care. Get them out of here. <laughs> or I would just say basics to keep in mind. If you're going to a wedding, you receive the invitation. You don't assume that other people you know are also invited. That's a touchy mm. thing. Like don't talk yes. about the wedding because you never know if it's a small wedding, large wedding. And sometimes it makes it more fun. You go to a wedding and it's sort of like a surprise reunion because you don't necessarily know all the people who will be there. You want to be giving a gift to the shower and the wedding if you're invited to both. What about an um, engagement gift? Because I usually will send that sometimes. Yes. Uh, I love necessary? an engagement gift. Okay. I, I love an engagement gift. I think it's a newer tradition. Not everyone does, but I think it's really sweet. And I also think it's nice to have like signature gifts to make things easy. Like if you have a favorite thing that you like to give people at these moments, like maybe it's like a white accessory or it's champagne glasses or it's a bottle of champagne or something. I have um, the Tiffany champagne glasses set mm, with their initial. It. And it, it actually is a lot less than you it's expensive it's like i think it depending on which one it's like 100 to 150 but that's mm -hmm. a lot less than i would think a pair of tiffany yeah champagne glasses are so what are some of your favorite engagement shower and wedding gifts and i obviously and then go into like the plate you know that's anxiety right, how right. much does a plate cost let me google how much this venue costs oh you know what they didn't have the well liquor at that wedding like i saw you know right. whatever what's a, what's an appropriate <laughs> wedding gift these days an appropriate wedding gift. I like to go off of someone's registry. <laughs> okay, so but I some like registries go. give me anger management issues. I'm like, girl, <laughs> you picked four forks and one thing from CB2. Like, I, I can't deal with this. Like, I need you to register for the moon and the stars. And then if we land somewhere like lower in the atmosphere, like that's what you're going to get. But like, yeah, people register like for a, more a, stuff. A pack of chip clips. <laughs> Yes. So when people are <laughs> registering, I do think it's nice to have a range of options so people can, they can buy the entire set of all the pans that you would like, yes. or they can buy one. Um, so you want to have things at different price points. I, I think if you, you should register for things that you really love and you really want. And I do think that the more you register for, the easier it is on your guests. And it's also easier for you as you're setting up your home because to the extent you don't get everything that you register for, you can just buy it yourself right. later on. And then on. it's all in one spot. Exactly. Like if somebody is registered for Scandinavian style things and I'm like Versace mansion, like Versailles, like I was born at the wrong time. Like I, I can't do that. Like just like, get, like give me a Waterford vase or something. Like, let me get <laughs> you that. Like people buy with feeling. People, yes. buy, I, yeah. I buy things oh, yeah. I would want. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. And there's certain people like I, I love my mother, but if she, I mean, she will buy the water for face. She will buy the Simon Pierce. She will like see that registry and be like, you know what? I think I'm going to go in a different direction. Um, but sometimes that's really nice too. And everybody's different. Well, what are gifts if you are having anger management with their registry that you can get them for engagement? Um, shower and wedding that are like timeless 99% of people will like them and they're adequate 
that, but okay. I also want to talk about if you're just going to write a check, what's an appropriate amount. So do the mm. gifts first and then we'll do the check. Okay. Or, so, if, the, or if you're not even supposed to I write don't a think, check. No, you can totally, well, the check Allison's is like of, carrying the one at the, okay, this is what this, <laughs> this, call, yeah. no, I think it, you can always give a check. You always, always can. I think that if you have a registry, it is kind of controversial to have like a honeymoon fund exclusively. Not uh, everyone loves that. Um, and so, and so I say if someone is, let's say, a couple, for whatever reason, they're not looking for a lot of physical items, tangible things, and they instead would like monetary gifts and they have only a honeymoon fund set up. If that is not something you're like super excited to give to, you can always just give a check or you can give through another means. And it's <laughs> it's like, it's sort of wordsmithing here. Um, but for anyone who has discomfort there, that's something you can do in a way that's still generous. I will buy I you a Yadro and you will like it. I <laughs> love a honeymoon fund because like Casey said, like I or like, like a new house fund or yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. I mm -hmm. like it to be personal. And I like, like to me, I'm like, I like, I love looking at some of the gifts that I have for my wedding and, and being able to think of, Oh, this friend yes. or this aunt mm -hmm. or whoever that got that for me. And it's like, I want to be able I've to give that G to, to others. Um, on and somebody's just Zola. Check, if you just write a check, you don't get that. But if you, if it's if it's the honeymoon fund, and you say, oh, this is going to this specific dinner that they're going to have. Some people that, do that now. They'll know, say like dinner night one. That's yes, I like that because I'm that. like, okay, I can put my name on. Yes, 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 yes. I love that, and that that makes me think of when you're writing thank you notes. It's nice to be able to also mention what they're going towards. So instead of thank you so much for the money, thank you so much for your generous gift. We intend to use it on whatever. And it can personalize that contribution. And everyone gets a card. Everyone that sent money gets the card. We used it for dinner the second night of our honeymoon. Every single person. Yeah. That's <laughs> fine. Well, that's one way of doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that's like a good thing to do. But in terms of engagement, shower, and wedding gifts. So for engagement gifts, you want to remember just like if you're doing – any of these gifts, you want to make sure that it's for the couple. So not just the bride. And I think for myself, I like often think of the bride and then it's like, oh yeah, it, there's also like a groom here. Often if we're talking about a heterosexual marriage, I love white, like fun white statement pieces or accessories. Like I have these white Lele Sadoe earrings that oh. I love to give. Um, or you have to be careful because people can be very particular about their manicures. If there's someone that does not get a regular manicure, or if you know they like gel, you can give them a color that's really nice to have when you're newly engaged. Um, that's a so great that's idea. Thing. Yeah, or even just um, a gift certificate to a spa, or if you know where they get their nails done, that can also be a welcome gift. And yeah, so those are things that I like. And also champagne glasses are great, champagne, bottle of Vouv, you can't go wrong. What are um, other that presents sort of that he will like too? That are more so, substantial. Yes. I say I often do champagne classes, boo, champagne, things like that. You can do gift certificates to nice restaurants if you know that they're foodies. Or um, you can also do gift certificates to spas if there are a couple that you think okay. might like that sort of a thing. Um, so more experiential stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the shower. I've actually had people, yes. my husband and I love experiences. We love going to sporting games and we love doing all that. And somebody actually <laughs> gave us a StubHub gift card for Ooh, our wedding, so which sweet. I loved because wow. it was like, it, it was their well, way because of you're saying, never like, in one spot. <laughs> well, that too. But it was like their way of saying like, we know you love experiences and we want to treat you Aww. to an experience, but without just writing a check, you know? I love so that. So we loved that. Yeah. That's really cute. Um, Regarding how much to spend, I really don't – I think you never want to spend beyond your budget. People are not inviting you to their wedding so that you can go into financial debt or hardship. So you want to remember that no matter what season you are in life. And also this is not a transactional thing. You're not going to a wedding to give a gift of equivalent monetary value of the experience that you are about to have. So – I, I don't encourage thinking that way. Even That's though, big. Yes. Um, because relationships are not about transactions, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important to remember that. And we're all in different seasons and stages of life and ages and all that sort of thing. But 
Generally speaking, if you are invited to both a shower and a wedding, it's recommended that you spend 30% of whatever your total budget is on the shower gift and then 70% on the wedding gift. Mm, And traditionally, the shower gift is more practical and then the wedding gift is more special. Yes. Oh, And that's changed over time, especially if you're giving to a couple that maybe the shower, like if they're not, if they don't love cooking, then maybe the KitchenAid mixer is not the gift you want to give them for their shower. But I love the Um, blue one and you will get the blue one and it will sit on your counter and you will like it. Let me tell you, I loved the pink one. I didn't use it for the first three years of marriage, but now my daughter uses it all the time and actually thinks it's a pink one just for her. And it's like the cutest thing ever. Yes. That's adorable. Gianna. (laughs) She made cupcakes with my mom yesterday, and it's so cute. I love that. See, that that's is so that is cute. That's extra cute. Um, transition. Let's go to baby gifts. Okay. Or baby showers. Or And here's the other thing that I'd love for you to touch on, like feeling that you have to invite family. And it's like, okay, my grandma is one of 11. So that's like 11 spouses or sisters. And then there's like 60 grandchildren, and then I'm the next. Like where does where do you draw the line for that? Okay. That is a great question. I think that it's helpful to have some bright line rules if you can. Like I'm only going to invite first cousins, not second cousins. I'm only going, that can be helpful. Where it gets tricky is if you are so much closer to some Mm -hmm. cousins or some relatives that sort of fit in the same category. Uh, But the reality is, I mean, frankly, I think it's harder if you're the oldest girl in your family because there's like this expectation that this is the first big party and everyone gets invited to it. And then with subsequent children and subsequent showers, it's there's not so much pressure because these relatives have already gotten together for other showers before. But generally speaking, you don't have an obligation to invite everybody all the time, especially Mm -hmm. if you prefer a more intimate, smaller setting. What is not okay, though, is you don't want to be inviting more people to your shower than you do to your wedding. Anyone who receives (laughs) any, and sometimes this happens and it can be, it can be tricky, especially if you have like a surprise engagement party and all of a sudden these people that you didn't intend to invite to your wedding are at your engagement party. It can be awkward, but Mm -hmm. I do recommend to the extent you can inviting everyone who was there to celebrate you, your engagement party to your, to your wedding ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then any and tips that you have for, for baby showers? For baby showers, I, again, go with the registry. Yeah. Um, I think go with the registry. And then also, if you, it's okay to have multiple showers, you want to be careful about inviting the same people to multiple showers. Like you, if you are friends in various spheres, like maybe your colleagues and you're also close friends, um, you don't necessarily need to give a big gift for both showers, but I I definitely recommend going with the registry and um, maybe having themes. If you're doing a sprinkle, if it's like, you know, a book shower, if it's, you know, whatever it is, um, embrace the theme. So we recently just heard about something. I sent it to Casey. And I, oh my I God. I love this. Amazing idea. <clears throat> this woman had, what did she call it? Her nesting party. Nesting party. She called it her nesting party. She said, I didn't want to have a shower. I decided to have a nesting party. And my best friend invited all of my friends over to my house. I had written out index cards of things that I wanted to get done in the house prior to baby arriving. And all of my friends just went at it. And the, they, her friends helped basically. Like, and I think she like got dinner or something. Like they ordered food in. Yeah. And then and she's like, yeah. and then we sat around and we talked about the new baby to be and how I was going to decorate the nursery and people like, you know, gave their ideas that I was looking for. And I thought that's such an awesome logistical way. And maybe that's better than a sprinkle because it's like, girl, you got the stroller, you got this, you got that. So like have the nesting party instead and get free labor. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I see it both ways. I think every baby should be celebrated. Yes, and every, yes, yes, yes. You know, every pregnancy yes. experience, like just because you had one baby doesn't mean that the yes. second pregnancy isn't hard. <laughs> doesn't right. mean right. Yes. And a that miracle woman in shouldn't itself. be celebrated sure. as well. But this was like, instead of doing the, oh, like little tea sandwiches and let's like watch Can you, you do up, both <laughs> is the question. I don't know. I think it's really to whatever yeah. some woman wants, but I just <laughs> loved that idea. I want to know your thoughts on that, a nesting party. 
I think that's fabulous. I haven't heard of that, but I think it's a great idea. And I actually think you could do both if you do it correctly. I wouldn't invite people to a traditional shower where you're asking for the uppy baby everything and then also asking to uh, renovate. Then come, a... Please clean my living room. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So so no. But I think that the way you described it, it sounds like a really sweet, intimate thing of close friends. We also and... need you to write out the wording for that invitation, Allison. <laughs> Oh. Like, yeah. How do you so- <laughs> sophisticatedly ask them to come and clean your nursery? I think it would think probably be like a yeah, casual no. thing. There's ways to do it. And yeah. I think it would probably be close friends. Like this is not like your relatives that are older and can't get mm-hmm. down on their knees and help you. It's people who just want to yeah. help. Want to help. Yeah. Which personally, me as a guest, like I would love to do that, you know, cause you always feel like you mm-hmm. can't do enough. Like I'm like some of my close oh, friends, yes. I feel like just sending a set of onesies or something off of their registry, right. like isn't enough to show how excited and how much I love you. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I would love to be able to get down on my hands and knees and bring your own wine something. and do it. Yeah. And you bring up a great point and etiquette. It's, it's so much better to offer very specific help. Like if someone is in a hard time, it can be difficult to know what to offer, but mm-hmm. saying, let me know if there's anything I can do to help is generally not as helpful as can I help you pick up the kids on Tuesday yes. or something that they can say yes or no to really quickly yes. or just isn't a complicated yes yeah. or no. You know, I deal with the grief world a lot and we talk mm-hmm. about that because mm-hmm. oftentimes we don't even know what we want. So how am I supposed to tell you? <laughs> mm-hmm. So by offering options of, you know, can I get something for you at Target? Can I help pick up your mm-hmm. kids? Can I help you come do the laundry? Like those are the things that are tangible and that the person is most likely going to need help with and can say, okay, since you're offering, yeah, that would be really great. So yes, mm-hmm. I love that. And doing laundry isn't dumb. Like that's a big task. Like that's Definitely. not like, oh, they don't need me to do that. It's like, yeah. no, they do. Yeah. Yes. Let's transition into holidays. So I want to talk about both being a host and being a guest, but what are some of the best tips that you have for hosting a (laughs) holiday or a dinner party at your home? Okay. So if you are a host, you want to be thinking like a guest. And if you are a guest, you want to be thinking like a host. Love that. Say it louder for the people in the back. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And if you are – so – If you're a guest, that means you don't show up early because if you're a host, you usually need those like last 10 minutes or so to just put all the final touches together. Well, because you're usually not ready. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I'm usually still in curlers. Right. And if someone (laughs) arrives and it's 10 minutes prior and you're not ready, you're not going to tell them like, I'm sorry, I'm not ready. You just need to like So should you come late? Like should you give – Oh, that's a good question. Should you give like a 15-minute buffer? Yes, I consider being there within the first 15 minutes being on time. Okay. Because if you're there right on the dot when the event begins, they're probably still just getting everything settled. Um, So I think if it starts at 6, being there at 6.15 is great. I love that. When, When does the holiday season officially start if you're throwing a holiday party? So... I mean, Thanksgiving, we can talk about Thanksgiving being holidays, but I think as soon as Thanksgiving is over, we really are in the like Christmas, Hanukkah season Whoa. because you already start to have like all of the work events typically happen yeah. before the social events and the family. Like, I feel like it's sort of like a layered experience. You have your work stuff, your social stuff and your family stuff, and then it's New Year's. Yeah. Well, what else about, okay, what else are musts for holiday parties or dinner parties? So you don't want to show up empty handed. So even if a host, if you ask a host, what can I bring? And they say, say, just bring yourself. What that means is I don't need your help with the food or the drink for this specific occasion. <laughs> is that rude to say that? Um, no, I think you, it, it depends on the relationship probably. Yeah. You like, if, if you <laughs> fear that someone is going to bring something with the intention that you will serve it that night and it like does not vibe with the menu that you have set and it's not the type of casual party. Um, I think it's fine to say, you know, we're all set for food and drink and you can also make special requests. Like if people want to help you, you can ask them to bring ice. You can ask them to- I was going to ask that. Okay. Ice. It's yes. normally that stuff at the last minute. You're like, oh my God, we have no more plastic cups or we have no more utensils to ice serving is yes. utensils always the thing yes. ice is always yeah yes. ice is always one of those things okay and so I that's think okay to as do. a 
Oh, definitely. It is absolutely okay to ask for help. Um, and it depends on the party. Like if you're if you're inviting people over for a black tie dinner, no, you should not be asking them to bring ice. Right. You should. It should not be a cocktail party. It should be a seated dinner and it should be formal and wonderful. So it depends on what it is, but there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Okay. Um, you just made me think of something else. I was going to um, ask, well, you go first, but I was going to say like, what are other options besides Vov? Like I had a housewarming party when we got our apartment in New York. Sure. And I had, I think two cases of Vov, which is great. It's like great your girl loves have. mimosas, <laughs> but like, I'm the person that's like, oh, I want to be different. I want them to be like, wow, Casey and Eric brought like <gasps> this magical gift, but it only cost me okay. the same amount as Vov. <laughs> Okay, so you're a very good gift giver, though. You are like on the like Casey McDonald Hosmer. Yeah, Casey McDonald Hosmer. Okay, as a, as a great gift giver. I am I'm a big like, the, like can we base talk about girl. The, Go ahead. I was gonna tell say, her. can we talk tell about the base that. that you got me? Okay, she so me. wait, so let me preface this by saying that her husband wanted to. He wanted to fight. He wanted yeah. me to come oh, yeah. down to Naples and fight him. Like, what the hell is this thing? We are never going to use this. This is so large, but it was this like we have very tall ceilings here. Dude, so this chick like has this, like twenty foot kitchen hi kitchen it sounds perfect so just this like a little vase didn't make sense so she got this huge one it's the ones where they kind of almost look like globes and mm -hmm. you can like put different things in it and then stick flowers in it or use it to display something anyway so i ended up going to our local market and got a big thing of flowers and i put it as like one of the main displays in our house and my husband loved it and was like, like loved okay <laughs> okay and now actually what our designer did was once we had the full install of all of our furniture she put it on top of our bar we have one of those bars that like the doors open and there's like all the glasses and bottles in there she put it on top of that and was like this can be a collection for corks so now like on sunday we opened uh... a bottle above and then we put the cork in there and sometimes two people like write the date that it was opened and we maybe do that. the event that it mm -hmm. was and then you put all the corks in and you can still like <clears throat> you know, stick some things in there as like decor or something. But I loved that idea too. That is so cool. Yeah. So cool. Casey, I don't know why you're asking me these questions. I feel like you know exactly what to get people. No, <laughs> but sometimes, but like also like, I'm not going to bring a vase to a dinner party. Like that, that yes. thing weighs like 30 pounds. Okay. So what I recommend is know your hosts Yeah. and know the kinds of things that they would like and buy them something that they wouldn't buy themselves if you can. Yes. Oh. So if they really like candles, but they... If right. That's like a brands, dumb like, thing to spend your own money on, but you'd love to have them around. Right. Right. Like if they might get like a Nest candle, maybe you get them a Le Labo candle or a Diptyque. Ooh, Diptyque. You know, or, like, ooh, those babies are pricey. But, but yes. It does. And it's not about the price, but just like the idea of just like something No, but a you're bit not going to buy it for yourself. Like that's like, you're yeah. like, oh my God, this is an expensive mm -hmm. candle, but they can enjoy it longer than a bottle of something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. This is good to hear because I actually just did this. We went and stayed um, with cousins the last time we were up north and I wanted to send them something. And my husband was like, yeah, just send them like a, a bottle or like a tray of like cheese and crackers or whatever. And I found like a really beautiful candle that had like all these types of like fall leaves and stuff like embed in it. So it's like really beautiful, mm -hmm. like on the outside. And I sent that. So yeah. okay. I also love that things was called that... like, I have to look at the company that that was. I'll, I'll send that, but go ahead. Things that are connected to you. So if it's like something special from Philadelphia or where you're from, that can also be really nice. Like I have family in Maine and there's this great chocolate shop. And so I love to send things from there. That's or a question. Like I'm going to stop you right there. Give me like <laughs> a few, like three to five websites because we don't want to pick up the phone. Like I want to yeah. do this like yeah. on online, three to five websites that are like great price, but sophisticated and elegant because it's like, Okay, like I'm not sending anybody. What's the meat company that like oh, everyone but... that everyone sends like the steaks, like Omaha steaks? I'm oh, not yeah, sending yeah. you Omaha steaks. Like I'm not gonna do that. So like, what are sophisticated? So gifts? I mean, you could, you can get fancier if you want to do steak. Like you can, but you need to know that people are going to like it. I've learned yeah. that before. Like I've sent Wagyu beef to someone that I should have just sent like standard grocery store steak, um, <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, I would say have a good florist. Like I use Eau de la Rose a lot for national delivery. It's great. And for what, flowers. Say that again. Great. Yeah, hello. Called? Okay. It's called Eau de la Rose. Ode. Okay. Uh, a la Rose is four really words. good. Um, yes, like French. <laughs> like 
Um, <laughs> so and... we're taking notes. We're in class. <laughs> so they're really good. Um, I like, I mean, I have a couple things. Like I really like pretty painted candlesticks. Um, so there's a company called MJ Tablescapes, I think it's called. They're really good. Um, the Harbor Candy Store in Maine is like a special thing because I'm from there. So I use them all the time. Um, I do use a lot of Diptyque, Le Labo mm-hmm. candles. You can get those at Neiman's or Bloomingdale's or directly from their stores. I also really like nice soaps. Um, yes, so, hand soaps too are yes. fancy pants. But like everything doesn't need to be expensive or super mm-hmm. fancy. I love to give books too. And I'm a big coffee table book person. You need to know That's your a guest. great idea. Oh yes. my God. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be super expensive. Like some coffee table books can be a hundred dollars or more, but some of them are, you know, closer to 30 or $40. Mm-hmm. It just depends on what it is. But the subject matter is really limitless. And even right. like, um, like if you're going to a, a guy's house, like if they're a golfer, the New Yorker has a great, or there's a great book that's all New Yorker cartoons of golf, which is funny. Mm. And that's like a nice little sweet one. Um, you can find great napkins if you like cocktail napkins yes. on Etsy. Um, yeah. Both I think paper. cocktail napkins are fun. I like personalized yeah. ones too. Let's say exactly. like if I were going to like the Hosmers or that. You Can know, you yes. send these after hood. the dinner party or will do you have to show up with said cocktail, customized Ooh. cocktail napkins from Etsy under Good your question. arm? Okay. You definitely can. That's a personal preference. I prefer, and I think this is just a personality thing. I prefer to have Receive something. Receive it that night. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, you want to like because... wipe your hands of it. Like you're done. Exactly. Cause it feels, a, but then oh, I can see why people like it the other way um, because it's like thanking them after the fact Mm -hmm. and they can enjoy it on their own. Another common gift, um, which was interesting. I, it's controversial. Some people don't like it, but the people who like it really love it is um, pastries or things for breakfast the next day after a dinner party. So like muffins and, you know, banana bread, pumpkin bread, things like that, which could be homemade or not. I like that idea. Especially if someone has guests. Let me take it Mm -hmm. off your plate for the next morning because you're doing Mm -hmm. all this tonight. I like that very much. Okay. Yeah. Do Um, you need to bring something bigger if you're staying over? Like what if yes. you're coming from like if I'm going from Fort Lauderdale over to Naples and staying at Gianna's house, like my cocktail napkins aren't gonna cut it. See, that's where yeah, like me I as would... the host, I'm like, I don't want you to bring anything. I'm just so happy that you're bringing yourself. <laughs> but yes. Right. So if you're staying overnight, I would recommend two things. I would say yes, be a little more generous because mm-hmm. this is a more significant undertaking on the part of your host. But it could be as simple as like, we don't know the area, but we would love to take you out to dinner or like one meal is on us or something mm, like that. I love that. And, and oftentimes, like when you're traveling with friends, there's a discussion of how all the finances are going to work, like how you're going to divide, if you're going to divide like the cost of transportation or meals or groceries and all that kind of thing. So that can be part of that larger conversation. So it doesn't need to be super complicated. But if you do want to break out some of your beautiful stationery, I recommend bringing it with you (laughs) and writing a note um, towards the end of your stay and either leaving it in your room or hand delivering it because it's a nice way. Yeah. And it's just like done. You can go home and you can focus on unpacking your bags and moving on to, you know, whatever you have going on next and not about sending a thank you note. And again, when it's fresh in your mind, your writing will just be better. That's very smart. Um, tell me about if you're the host, are there little tips and tricks you have for making the perfect event? Yes. I'd say begin with intention. So what's the purpose of this event? Is it to bring family together, old friends, celebrate, celebrate a certain occasion, certain moment? Will there be kids there? Is it like, just know the intention and then everything follows from that. So who are the people who will be there? What is the dress code? What is the food? What is just create a fabulous experience that is consistent with that intention. And then as a host, it's up to you not to micromanage, but to shepherd the experience of everyone that comes into your home. So that means having some ideas of like people you want to connect with each other, or maybe there's things they have in common that they may not know that you could 
make them aware of. Mm -hmm. If you see someone that's like awkwardly not really talking to anybody, maybe you can welcome them. If you know like a friend is going through a hard time um, and you're going to be really preoccupied in the kitchen, you can ask another friend or family member to make sure that they're kind of comfortable and taken care of. So like 30,000 feet view of what's going on Mm -hmm. ahead of time. Yeah, because people, they might appreciate the details, but above all, they're going to remember the experience in a a more collective way. I just read something about that recently. It's like there's a lot of things at a dinner party or when you're hosting people that you can't necessarily control, but you can control the vibe of the room. And that is having light music playing, having candles lit, Mm -hmm. making sure there are drinks or something that's easily accessible for guests where they don't feel uncomfortable. Like, oh, can I get a glass of water or something like that? So it's like the little things that you can control. If that is at like a really great level, then the rest of it will kind of just fade into the background. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I know we use the word vibe all the time, but it's so true. You can recover from so many other little things, but having an awkward or weird or uncomfortable vibe is really hard to recover from. (laughs) Wait, this is a random question and I don't know why I'm just realizing it, but Allison, we didn't talk about why you got into this. We can talk about that. What uh, what struck you? Because we like, had so many questions, we just I know, like, like, like rabid <laughs> dogs. Oh my god! No, it's all good. So, so eleven years ago now, my husband and I got engaged to be married, and I had some wedding etiquette questions, like some of the questions that we were talking about just now, that I wanted the answer to, and I went on to become a lawyer. So I guess it's no surprise that I'm pretty rules oriented and I wanted some bright line rules that I could follow and implement and not offend anybody and just do the right thing. And so I got my first etiquette book. It was the Amy Vanderbilt complete book of etiquette, which is like a really hefty encyclopedia size book. And I got the answers that I was looking for. And then I read that book cover to cover. And since then I've read countless books on etiquette and protocol and soft skills and emotional intelligence and all of that sort of thing. And I continued to work first in television news and then as an attorney in the government and the private sector and then um, in nonprofit. And all along, I had the opportunity to work with some really bright, exceptional people. And I saw that your education and your professional credentials can take you to a certain point But it's the people who are kind, who know how to be respectful, who know how to conduct themselves. Those are the ones that really stand out. And so that's how I got into it. So this this episode is going to air a little bit later than when we're recording it right now. But right now it's um, October 25th. And what's in the news about, obviously, Taylor Swift continuing to go to the Chiefs games. (laughs) And there was just something in the news about uh, Mr. Kelsey – Travis and Jason's father pointing out what he noticed the most about Taylor was that she walked around the suite collecting paper plates and plastic cups and threw them away. And he was like, she did clearly didn't get that diva memo clearly doesn't have people picking up after her hand and foot. And like, here she is one of the biggest pop stars in the world. And he could be so impressed by all that. And he's like, what I really took away was that she's she was a kind, courteous, Mm -hmm. caring person that walked around the suite when she didn't have to and did those kind of things. So I totally mm-hmm. agree with you that it's those little things, especially from the people that you don't expect. And when mm-hmm. you see those those mannerisms or those those gestures mm-hmm. are are very important. Oh, absolutely. And it's it's not just Taylor Swift. Like when I speak to groups of high school students, I tell them you are role models, whether you know it or not. There are people who are looking up to you and the way you behave really matters. What's on the high school students' mind? Like what are their big etiquette questions? Um, often it's like fact specific things about what to say in given scenarios. Many of them struggle with talking with parents or with questions like, where are you, are you applying to colleges? What schools are you looking at? Kind of a lot of those like milestone related questions that are easy for an older person to think like, oh, this is what we can talk about. Um, those can be tri- tricky to navigate. And then also 
as some of their peers are being accepted to schools and just kind of like competition related questions, I guess. Got it. Yeah. Those can be hard. I just feel like you have to be a very Zen person. Like me, you specifically, yes, right? <laughs> you sound it. I feel very calm. Oh, like interview. you are. I feel. Oh, I'm glad. I feel so out of control, like talking to you, because I'm like, whoa, like she's very calm about all this stuff, and I'm like, the paperless post. They didn't open it yet. Nah, nah, nah. Like your paperless post, okay? Like I, I, I just, I think I. Just oh yeah. It, let's let's yes. talk about paperless that. Paperless posts, okay? Paperless posts are okay, and I feel like. If you are a recipient of paperless posts, you should know that the host can see if you open something. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's kind of a game changer. If you send um, a if you send a virtual invitation, is it okay to send a virtual thank you note? That's a great Which question. Which is a text message, <laughs> or is it, or is an email more formal than a text message? I would, I don't know. I would say an email is probably more formal, but they would get lost. I think if you're not going to write. If you're not going to write something and send it in the mail, then just text. Yeah. But I, I like, I like handwritten thank you notes, even mm-hmm. if it's a virtual invitation. And I send a lot of virtual invitations, especially because I'm in a season of life where I have a lot of friends that are moving frequently, and mm-hmm. it's just easier when you have people's phone numbers or emails to. Yeah. What's wrong oh, with us that we do that, us millennials? That we move so much. We're like I nomadic. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's just easier sometimes yes. to to do it that way. Definitely. Um, Something that is nice, though, about paperless posts is you can print out an invitation if you want to. So I've done this for, like, a bride and their mom mm. so they can have a hard copy of the invitation and everybody else gets the digital mm. one. Okay. So you can do that if you Zazzle want to. Zazzle is go-go. also great. Like, Zazzle mm-hmm. is – if you do it on a laptop, you can really be a – like, I feel like I'm a graphic artist after I <laughs> Amazing. something. Yeah. Um, also with paperless post, you can send like the, re- the gentle nudge, the love yes. tap that I call yes. it. Which is, which is fantastic. Yeah. And it's, it's very efficient. And oh, another thing. So if you are a guest, you should respond in your RSVP to the person and in the way requested on the invitation. What so, does that mean? Oh, if so they say, like, like, respond to maid of honor, respond to mother of the bride, and that lists, like, that person's name and email, don't text the bride yes. and be like, I'm coming. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and if you're, like, it's becoming more common to say, like, five women are sharing co-hosting duties for a baby shower, one of those people ideally should be in charge of keeping track of RS- all of the RSVPs because if not, it can just become really complicated really fast. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was looking up Ode, Ode a, la, a la Rose. It's like, They're great. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see what's on that site. Here's my question, though. So you know how a lot of um, floral delivery services are – you don't get what you think you get. Like, yes. Especially with, like, FTD or, like, 1-800-Flowers or even yes. um, Farm Girl Flowers I've tried before. And, like, sometimes they, they don't arrive with the – yes the zest for life that I would like the flowers to have the mm-hmm. vigor, if you will. So like, this is a good site. Like their roses are this not This is dead. a good site. Definitely. Okay. I use okay. it for my events all the time. I actually use it for myself because it makes things easier to just okay, have perfect. things delivered. Yeah. My mom's trick. And sometimes this is basically what some of those sites do. Like the FTD flowers and 1-800 flowers is like you put mm-hmm. the order into their sites, but they're going mm-hmm. to the local florist anyway. Mm-hmm. They're basically yes. just charging you yes. the broker's fee. Oh so what my mom yeah, like, does is she just looks at the person's address, finds a florist near them, calls them directly, says what she's looking for, this type of flower, this color, this amount of like size or budget or whatever, and then has it done. And it's like so much cheaper. You're speaking to a direct person. And I know that we as millennials don't like to speak to a direct person, <laughs> but sometimes it's just, it's done. It's you're supporting a small business and it's actually cheaper in the process. I want to show you, I want to just pause on that because I did that once. Uh Oh, for my friend, my best friend, Kate's wedding. I called and I was like, she, it's a Gatsby theme. I want like golds and off whites and greens. And this is what I got. Oh my wow. gosh. Yeah, like they little... spray painted the roses gold. Oh no. Oh no. And I said, <laughs> I want it full. Like that's sometimes what you get. Yeah. Yes. I know. I, I can totally relate. And I, don't really experiment with florists. Odal Rose is one that I trust. 
they don't have they basically have some seasonal pieces that they sprinkle in there but for the most part it's the same Pretty arrangements classic. all the time yeah. yes and then there's certain florists that i know in specific cities like i where my parents are you can where count I live on them. in washington exactly gee does your mom um yelp cross reference when she no. does that no wow oh. and she like lucks out every time i'm sure yeah <sighs> hasn't had any issues since Anyway, I will before... say if you receive or real quick, if you receive flowers, I do recommend sending a picture to the person, like yes. texting a picture and, and saying like, these are so beautiful. Thanks so much because yeah. everyone's curious and it becomes a little weird where it's like, well, can you send me a picture? You know, depending <laughs> on the relationship. Right. Yeah. I want to, I want to know if I should use that florist again or not. Or are they right. good? Yeah. Yes. Totally. Um, all right. Before we let you go, what are some of the adequate questions that we're not asking or the things that you're like, I wish people were so rude on this a little <laughs> bit more in their lives? Oh, I would say small talk is a good one. Knowing what to say in different scenarios, not asking people. And you, this podcast is so wonderful in terms of the conversations you start and about like not asking people about fertility Mm -hmm. or pregnancy loss or if they're going to have another child and Mm -hmm. like some people just don't know that that's not okay and they think they're asking you a totally innocuous question and so I think there's a lot to be learned in that area but just being able to talk about yourself with strangers and have some ideas for hobbies and family friendly things that you can talk about that you're interested in talking about so that you're not just saying like, how are you busy? Oh, good, good. Yeah. Like just, well, what are um, some things you can talk about? Cause you can't. Okay. So we know here, don't, don't say, Oh my God, when are you having a baby? Oh my God. Mm-hmm. You have to have a baby. Don't do that. Don't talk about politics. Don't talk about religion. So what are like safe, the safe zones, safe zones for everybody going to like, okay, you're, you're going to Thanksgiving or you're going yes. to Christmas and you yeah. know, you're like, Oh, they invited that weirdo family. And I know that like <laughs> Jim is just going to be like asking me so many personal questions. Like, how do you like, so, what, what, like yeah, what are the safe zones? Okay, how do you deflect? <laughs> so the way I, and you have to do what's consistent with your personality. Like if you're not a super direct person, you don't need to respond in a super mm-hmm. direct way. But also if you are super direct, you don't need to be like sheepish about it. So do what works for your personality. But generally you can not answer kind of like softly deflect or not answer maybe use some humor and then change the topic into something that doesn't make them feel terrible for asking you that like you know like and then change the topic into something that they actually would like to talk about can we do it can we can we role play sure okay (laughs) Allison what what are you guys having a baby like what's going on I don't know um I don't know but you know, I'm, I'm, or I guess, I don't know. Or you could just be answer. like, I mean, you could be like, oh my God, have you seen the Barbie movie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Something like, well, okay, what's something? Okay, what's say, something I don't know, awkward. but I heard that so-and-so in the family just had a beautiful baby. Have you met the baby? Yes. Da, 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 yeah. Like turning it on to that That's person. actually perfect. Yeah. Yes. yes. What's I another awkward thing that is awkward and you can deflect without saying like, I have to pee. <laughs> um, so people asking you how much money something costs. What? Um, yes. Anything related to that. And what do you say? I, I just, I just say like, oh, I, I don't remember generally. Or there I'm, was I'm a Sebastian sure. Maniscalco stand up where like he's saying like his dad is like, how much does that flat screen cost? And, and like, there's a parent figure that you have. Like mm-hmm. it's always usually like a, a 60% markdown that you tell your parents. And he's like, I could have built that. It's like, no, you couldn't have built that. Yeah. But like, <laughs> maybe there, is there like a markdown you do or do you just not touch a dollar, a dollar amount? I don't touch a dollar amount. And I, you don't need to lie either. Like you don't need to say like, oh, we got a great deal. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. like you just say, you know, I'm not, I, I don't really remember. And and another thing to keep in mind there is, is some people find it, if you ask a question about where did you get something, it can come across as how much did it cost? Because yes. it's like kind of easy to figure out like, did you get it at St. John or did you get it at J. Crew Or did right. you, you know? Yeah. Um, and so you need to, kind of know your audience to know whether or not they would be offended or whether this is just like a fun conversation about fashion or my husband's decor. response sometimes is just like oh it was enough <laughs> <That's> <laughs> great fun. yeah yeah and I feel like every family can benefit from someone that's like 
just comfortable being themselves or like being blunt or being the one that's like, okay, it's time to go home now or I'm going to bed or Mm -hmm. um, those kinds of things. What are safe – okay, I feel like I'm back in sorority rush. What are like safe topics that are limitless that you can like throw at someone and it'll just snowball and you could just stay in your safe space? If they're a reader, books. Okay. I was going to say books, TV, movies. Yes, books, TV, movie, um, movies, travel, mm. and food also. And then also favorite traditions or memories. And then, Memories, that's a good one. Yes. Um, you can also ask people like instead of what do you do, you can say something like, how have you been spending your time lately? What are you passionate about? What are you most excited about? That's what are you looking good forward one. to? That gives es- me anxiety. Especially, well, listen, Kate, I mean, like, so especially me moving to a, a new town and Casey's going to go through this soon, hopefully when she like sets up a place somewhere and sets up a community and starts meeting new friends, there's a lot of time, you know, I don't, I don't know what people do for a living. And, and when you yes. know what people do for a living, that then takes on the next stage of conversation. Oh, mm-hmm. you're yes. in real estate. Da, da, da. So yeah, I feel so rude asking and and especially too, like some people may not work and I, I hate because people do it to me and I hate when they say this, do you work? Yes. I hate that. But I, yes. I feel like, so like, what do you do for work also sounds weird. So how I do think you that it's weird. I'm just now hearing that she's embarrassed of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think that people, once they kind of drop hints about work, then they have opened it up to say like we're comfortable yes we're comfortable talking about this or if they say like oh my husband's always traveling I'm like oh is it for work like what does your husband do he's in the circus yeah that's generally the (laughs) answers that I receive yeah (laughs) actually Tampa is like the whole isn't that like where like one of the circuses was born there or something right I don't know. I haven't read up on my circus history lately. I, I want to say, okay, I don't know. I'll have to put a pin in that. But t- I, I thought Tampa was like a big circus. I don't know. Keep going. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> but I think what's also important is you don't want to come across as though you're like interviewing the person to see if there's something that could be helpful to you mm. that you can reveal. And then when you ultimately don't find that, you're like, okay, next. Mm-hmm. Um, similarly so, like it's good to kind of get comfortable in – social situations where you're having a conversation and you might want to talk to other people, but you're not like looking around the room, making it obvious that you don't want to talk to that person and you're (laughs) eager to talk to somebody else. But then also knowing that just because you begin talking to someone at a party does not mean you need to talk to that person for the rest of the evening. That Why did that bring me like right back to a frat party? Uh Uh-huh. Like you're like, oh my God, it's talking to Susie. Like I better make a run for the, the beer pong table. (laughs) <laughs> but it happens in adulthood too. It totally happens in yeah, adulthood. Yeah, and there's always the like, oh, well, I'm going to go check out the hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> like, right, gonna, and then you never really come back. excuse yourself yes. from the conversation. Yeah. Right, but there's nothing wrong with saying it has been so lovely catching up with you. I really enjoyed insert specific facts about what mm-hmm. you talked about. Always good to mention that. And then just say, I'll look forward to seeing you again next time, or I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening, and you can move on. That's Yeah, that's really good advice. I love that. Gotta go. Bye. Yeah. On that note, Allison, we've really enjoyed having you. (laughs) This has been so fun. And and I I really enjoyed all (gasps) of the tips that you gave us. Yeah, this was so, so good. I can't wait for our audience to hear this. Um, And I feel like there's probably going to be some things that we're going to encounter along the way Mm -hmm. that we're going to be like, we need to get the expert opinion on this. This is going to be like, what's the, Mm -hmm. what's the Bravo show? Like you've like a reunion show. So we'll have a reunion show with you and talk about all of the bad things that people did to us over the holidays. That happened over the holidays. (laughs) Yes. I would love that. Um, (laughs) And I really mean it. You guys have a phenomenal podcast. I love Thank the energy. You. you really, you both are so, so good together. And Thank you. I think the work you're doing is so important. Thank you. Oh awesome. my God. The work you're doing Appreciate is important. So much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for making us a, a gentler and kinder society. <laughs> <laughs>